I keep saying that I will be a science woman and I will invent a green formula to, to save humanity. So I'm actually coming from a chemical engineering background and then I can say for myself more like I'm a material scientist than a physicist. Now my project is also quite interdisciplinary, so which relieves me a little bit. So it's between connects uh, physics with material science, engineering and robotics because we are in collaboration with robotics department. So in short, I'm trying to like uh, uh, fabricate some invisible markers like QR code like patterns to help robot navigation. It's already existed, but it's mainly used in robotics lab, which called as fiducial markers, but they are similar to QR codes, like black and white uh, patterns. But we are trying to take those markers out of the lab, and then we are foresee that in future will be full of robots around. So it's better, it doesn't like uh, disturb our vision, our aesthetic uh, in the human populated areas. I know that it sounds scary, but actually we are doing this to, to protect us to protect humans that they can safely navigate and without interrupting like personal integrity because then we won't tag humans obviously we will just tag uh, like samples around so they will see okay this is a um, door and or we can also give some semantic informations into that so we can give some some meanings or like they can take actions based on the the code telling them so they will decode it but eventually we are the ones who are creating it. Actually, they are not that smart or as they look, because if you don't give them instructions, they cannot do anything. So I'm here, or like our research here, to provide that it will be, that integration of robots into human life will be safe enough. So when I think my childhood, actually, I was always saying, there was one sentence, I keep saying that I will be a science woman and I will invent a green formula to, to save humanity. Like I will give my mom, my grandma, so they won't get older. They will always stay young. And then only, and I was saying, like I will only give it to good people. I don't know how I will evaluate who is good, who is bad. But actually there are no scientists in my family. Maybe it was also a try. There are mostly arts people in my family. But in a way now I'm thinking when I'm doing, going into lab, I'm kind of also creating some things. Maybe I inspired by them. I mean, actually, I would like to prove that I wasn't the best student in my high school as well. So I was even hate physics and uh, chemistry because of the grades maybe. But now I'm in it, I think there are places for everyone. Like you don't have to be a smartest, but you need to be curious and like a stubborn enough to keep continue and ask like have a courage to ask why or like other questions to, to keep moving in science. I think with time I've learned and we should all learn that to treat failures as data because it's like when something is not working it's like root is re-establishing like in the navigation so and also maybe you cannot accomplish at the end with a different route but it's also a thing to show to other people this route is not working and you are somehow giving that information to the science community that they shouldn't try or like what you have done before. Yeah.